Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, we're going to continue some of our painting. Now today I sat down to uh, uh, to do some commission work and I decided, well, you know what, I gotta, I'm going to paint up this and, uh, and, and film it and uh, share it with you guys as well. What I have been doing a lot of this last week is, you know, we're doing a lot of our um, smaller uh, uh, paintings, Christmas ideas, gift ideas that, uh, you know, all paint up within 30 minutes. Here's a couple of them. Like I did this little bird and daisies here the other day. It is now up on the Jansen Art Line um, website. So we're going to do probably, these are little 8 by 10 boards, easy to frame, easy to find frames on. Here's a couple of roses and some wild roses I did. Here's some Here's a rose and some daisies. These are all quick little designs, smaller ones. Um, that I did and we're going to have probably be about 12 to 15 of them. I'm going to do some landscapes and some other things and they're all going to be up on Jansen Art Online. But I have to do this commission piece today and I thought, well, you know, even though this is a little bit bigger board, it's about 12 by 16, I thought it would make a nice one to those of you that, you know, you can, because you can size it to anything uh, that you want. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll toss this in and film this up at the same time. So, okay. All right. So let's get into it. And another thing that I usually sketch out some of my design whenever I'm going to do a bird. This I'm going to do a little wobbler. And I want the little wobbler to um, to have more of a rose mauling, uh, you know, kind of feel to it. And I'm not sure exactly yet, but I love this kind of positioning. So when I go to sketch a little wobbler and stuff like that, I started sketching it this morning and I thought, well, maybe I'll show you guys how I do this. You know, what I do is I pull out some of my reference photos. This is the yellow rump wobbler. Um, and I grab a couple of photos of him and I start to analyze them and stuff. And, and you know, wobblers are, are kind of easy to uh, to kind of sketch out because basically what they are is a pear shape. So what you do is you do a, a pear shape and then you take another circle and, and you bring it in about halfway in here. So if you look at this right here, you can see here's the pear shape of the wobbler right here. So basically that one here is you draw kind of a, a pear shape up and around and sketch this little head right in there like that and then i and then i start bringing the lines together so he, he would come in about halfway here and then these two lines would soften in together and then that would point, form the point of his head i look where the point of his beak is going to go and that so this one will will sit right in there like that and then i position his eye right in line with his beak and that's how you start to that's how you start to get the sketch of them and then I look for the position of their wings which are another oval longer one oval width and then there's another slightly oval here that goes into their tails and that's how I so wobblers are kind of neat because you can see you know in all of them that you in all of them that you draw you see basically you look at no matter what kind of wobbler you're drawing you're looking at a pear shape to them so you know look at, at this one right here see here's a pear shape right here there's the second line that's right here and by flattening this out, you're, he's turning away just a little bit. What's very important is the position of the beak into the head. How much of how much are you going to bring down this? Now I'm going to turn this guy, little guy's head here. Um, so you know this guy is not quite turned quite as much. So I'm going to turn this guy's head here, which means foreshortening his face, which means here that I'm going to bring this in here. So these strokes right in here. These down strokes we do on his head are going to be the most important. We might pick up a little bit of an eye over there or something. I'm not uh, really quite sure on, you know, how much I want to be able to show on that yet. But we'll bring down, since he's going to be a, a yellow wobbler, or yellow rump wobbler, we'll bring down his uh, yellow areas and his wing. And I want to have um, his yellow areas right down in here and some white and stuff. Then as you go to draw his, this will be his mantle feathers back here. And then as, he, as you get into his coverts and then his, what are called his primaries, his secondary flight feathers and his tertiary. So I'm opening up his, this one, his wings closed down just a little bit more. You see your primary, secondaries and tertials or tarsals or what they call tertiary flight feathers. And I'm going to have those a little bit fat, flatter here. I want to be able to see the little yellow that's going to supposed to be on his rump right there. So I have that turned slightly there. He's going to be kind of a fun bird. Do I sketch that? Now, I want to do a rose mauling flare with this too. And whenever you draw rose mauling, we usually draw the C. 
and I don't oh sometimes I'll set them within a C like this so I'll push you know one in like this and then I'll open that up but I'm gonna have him setting but that's gonna put a lot of lifting pressure right here he's already lifting up so I'm gonna curve it down to pull the viewers eye down this way here so that's what I want to do so I'll put a big C that he's gonna sit on more of an elongated one right in here like this and uh, we'll widen it out here about like that so we'll put this big old scroll on there so this customer that that uh, likes the way in which I, I put these kind of things together so I thought well maybe I'll film it for you guys here so I can come out with another uh, C unit or something like here as long as I keep it smaller as I keep the main unit right here this will be the main one I might curve this around a little bit more so it pulls your eye around we could even back that up with another scroll right like that but um, these are all things I usually do with my brush but a little C over here would be kind of nice maybe just I want to do it contemporary so I'm going to move color throughout the whole background here and then this will give me place um, this customer wants my casual uh, um, roses you know that go into the, the rose mauling that I do more of a rose into it so I'll maybe do one maybe uh, maybe we'll turn this one down and this so wherever I put the center that that's those two are lined up too much so maybe this one over this way and this one will go let ahead and go back and be a lifting one here and we'll just put some more colors out like that so and I'll keep it light I keep it airy I keep the ability for me to uh, we might come out with a little bit of something right out here just like that that forms a beautiful that forms the wonderful S that I do love to design on there's a lot to design um, I have online courses that are you know 50 60 hours of just design and different things drawing big furniture pieces you know everything from drawing flowers and designing with animals and you know put how to draw landscapes how to do all that kind of stuff doing it by weight uh, by design interests and edges and stuff like that so there's a lot of different philosophies on it and you know I, I call it all theory because there's nothing that's really a fact I do have some things that are fact but it's a lot of theory but anyway so I'll start out with that and I don't want to do too much more than that because if I give myself too many structured lines then my creativity tends to go down as I start to fill in those lines you know so I don't really do that color wise today I have out I'm painting pure acrylic so I just took my colors just like the ones I had here and I just squirted them all out right here this is Hansi yellow dark light yellow yellow oxide um, naphthol red light um, burnt sienna pine green phthalo blue na um, quinacridone violet red violet and then a big old dollop just off camera here a big old dollop of white that I have now I go through so much you know these little tubes that buy little tubes normally I use jars but I want to show you something this just because I do so much painting this is a gigantic container of white of titanium white I do a tremendous amount of painting a container of titanium white like this will last me two maybe three weeks three weeks on the outside um, that's how many paintings and stuff I do I do uh, four to five hundred paintings uh, you know a year right now this will be painting for uh, 430 of the year so I do a lot of those kinds of paintings so if you're an artist professional artist something that does a lot of painting you can get the heritage in bulk too which is a lot cheaper than than buying it always in the tubes all right so brush wise of course I have my favorite uh, fusion fusion flats I've used some small ones here the uh, number four round when painting the bird uh, number four flat or a number two flat mostly a number four flat I you know I put out the two just because and then I love for I love an older brush especially uh, this is an older number 10 you can see it doesn't hold its chisel as well as a uh, you know some of the other ones and stuff I love that for scrolling and stuff never throw your brushes away there's always more techniques but I have some other sizes out here and in case I need to use it and I do have my filberts up there in case I want to use that okay so one of the first things that I'll probably do here 
is add some interest to the background. Add some of this movement. That What that does is that immediately starts to lighten you up and get you flowing in with the color. So you're just kind of pushing stuff around. And it's nothing that you can't change, all right? So I'm going to paint. I have a little cap of extender out here in case I need it. Uh, but mostly I like to paint acrylic. And so I'm just going to use some water. And I have a big old stack, a big stack of paper towels here because I love to... Uh, Wipe my brush all the time with my paper towel, and I have a, a huge stack of them. So let's start first with moving some color through. First, let's, he's got some yellow in him, right? So we're going to key off of yellow, like we might have yellow roses in here or something like that. But yellow will be one of our key colors because he's got that, and we want to be able to carry that yellow color through. So I consider yellow a common color now throughout the painting. It's something I'm going to carry. So the background that I have here is um, the premix color medium white and light gray one to one. So I just take medium white and light gray mix it one to one. If you don't have those you can just take some white, a touch of yellow oxide and any kind of gray color or black to darken it down. Okay so if you don't even have black you could take a little blue and burnt sienna yellow oxide and white, but leave it slightly, slightly on the yellow side. But let's take a softer, a real soft kind of yellow here, uh, white and some yellow oxide here, and uh, just just about, about the value of what we have here. Now, it will dry darker. Let's take a look. See, that's kind of pretty, just a touch light. Uh, let's grab just a touch more yellow oxide and a touch of water here. Yeah, that's better. And let's just kind of push this through the background just to, and I'll use my paper towel, that'll just kind of break up our our uh, our whole feeling of our background color. And when I'm painting scrolls and stuff, I like movement. And, you know, sometimes I do this with blues and other colors and everything. We're not going to do, I don't think I'll have blue today. I might, you know, I never close my mind to anything. But I'm, um, I just don't think I'll have it today, but let's drop this down just a bit and push a few little touches of that around because we're going to, so I'm just going to push some different colors into the background. So yellow's our key color now in our painting because of this wobbler. We want to make sure it carries and immediately this is going to carry that yellow, you know, right around everywhere. Now let's also take, uh, let's make, um, we have, <clears throat> you know, one of my favorite colors is pine green and the uh, um, burnt sienna. And then I'm going to lighten this up again here. In other words, make another soft, kind of greenish color maybe. Warmer kind of greenish color. A lot of water into this here. And I'm going to push this around also as well. Just kind of carry this through. This is just some movement. Now I'll soften some of this. Well, we just want to be able to see some of this color coming down. Now, a lot of this, it looks like, oh, well, wow, what are you doing back there? But that's, you know, this is just going to add such lovely movement, power of movement. So if I have my scroll line, I'll put a power line like this running through and then break it. The Dutch called it St. Andrew's Cross whenever they went this way and this way. And that put in a subtle center of interest in something like that. So... I like to do that kind of thing, and I'll splash a little bit of this around, and maybe it's back, you know, it's it, it's just background movement. That's all I want. So you see some yellow, some of the greens, and uh, that's pretty nice. Now, um, let's pick out another color, a color that we would want to have into our roses and stuff, which is usually some of my quinacridone violet here. I love that color. I'll just tone it down here with some of the... Um, some of the greens and we'll add a little bit of white here let's just push a bit of that running through right where i'm going to paint the roses so most of it will disappear but we might pick up a, a few a few tones of it you know you can just barely see that tone here and uh, so you just pick up a little bit of that moving through this makes it i know it looks kind of crazy but this just gives you uh, some beautiful beautiful color you know, in the in the uh, the painting here, um, 
movement of color. So we have some yellow. So you look out through here, you see your green here, and it's very soft, but you see some greens, you see some yellows, and you see some of your um, um, the cornacridone violet, okay? Now, let's come in here, and uh, let's take some of that. Uh, maybe, since, uh, you know, burnt sienna it is a great color that works so well with the yellows and stuff. A little green here in it. Let's um, let's use that. I'm going to start, because I'm going to build this scroll, and because I'm going to do a casual one. I'm just going to start right out here onto the chisel, and let this come down right around like that and let that color run off of my brush here. Just drag it around a little bit. Let that color run off my brush here. So I don't want this to uh, be a solid, solid color. So let's come in right in here and we'll start out like that and we'll pull this right down into there. Let that fade away. Since I didn't get any granulation there, maybe wipe my brush just a bit and we won't reload it here so I can get some different looks. That's what I want these to have is some different looks. Uh, let's build that backing stroke right here. So I can start out onto the chisel and come out right here like this that backs the top of that scroll right there like that. That's kind of pretty. Now I'll finish off down here because I've joined it in when I put this seg the little segment here. It's called an acanthus leaf and so I'll, I'll start right up into that and I'll put the uh, the tail of the scroll on down here like this with a couple of strokes. I like it to granulate out and uh, so do a lot of my customers and my students. That granulation just adds a lot of interest. Now let's work on this uh, acanthus leaf that's right here. And I'm putting this on because the scroll controls so much of the um, the movement, the power of the movement of this uh, particular design and painting here. Well, they do. That's why they have been, you know, so popular in, in history. They control so much movement and power. Now, I like that. Uh, I like that movement. I'm just going to soften that just a bit with my finger because the too, uh, just a few too many streaks right there. But I do love that skipping that's there. And people always are like, you know, how, how do you get that? Well, you just don't use too much. You don't use a lot of paint and in your brush. And you make sure that the surface that you're doing here. So I don't have any sealer. I don't have anything in my surface. So my surface is what we call matte. And so the brush... The, it, what it's doing is that matte surface is grabbing all the moisture out of my brush. And so the longer stroke you run, the uh, the more matte it is, and it starts to granulate out like that because the surface. Now, if you make your surface too slick or too hard, you add sealer to it or you make it too hard, um, then when you draw, that moisture stays in your brush and you got a perfect stroke all the way around. So it what really controls that whole look is, is really the... Um, uh, the surface, the tension, surface tension of your board. All right, let's go in and let's start painting a little bird here. And let's start out with like a number six here, um, just to start blocking in some of the colors, some of the areas of color. I'll start out first with some, and you can just take your paper towel here and, and uh, just with a little water and just run it right through your palette here so you can clean up a little bit so you have yourself some more room here. So we won't... Uh, can stay under the camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, let's um, take our number six here. I'm going to start out with yellow oxide, the darker, more toned of it, and I'll use that basically for some blocking in. He's gonna, he's a yellow rump robber. He's gonna have some yellow right under there. He has a little yellow on his top knot right up here, and uh, we're and I I start out with the yellow oxide because it's not the brightest of all the yellows. It has a nice opaquing quality to it as well, so it can help. See how it can take out some of my design lines there? I'm going to, so we don't forget this, let's put a little bit here onto his rump. I'll push it a bit so I get rid of some of the graphite right there from my from my drawing and just go right over it. And a good acrylic like that will cover that up pretty heavy, see? So it gives that yellow and gets gets that right into that area there. We've got light colors and we have gray colors. We're gonna, since we're keying off of the yellows and that burnt sienna in there, let's take burnt sienna 
and some thalo blue. It's going to take just a little thalo blue. Thalo blue is so powerful. This is going to, if we leave it slightly on the thalo blue side, it'll make a blue gray. You know, but I like to use these two when making gray. Sometimes I use reds and greens, but I like these two when, when I'm making gray. Let's put a little red into that too. Um, I like this, like this when making the gray because I can vary the gray so much. So I can make it warmer with the burnt sienna side, cooler with the, uh, the blue side here. Um, he's the yellow rump wobbler, especially the male, is a little bit cooler as far as the grays go. Let's start blocking in just a little bit here. Now, see what I do is I may, I don't take big full strokes. I do shorter, shorter strokes here, but I'm contour following. In other words, I'm following the contour as I'm basing in here of the, the feathers that I'm going to be applying. So we'll follow uh, here. We'll pull into his head here just a bit here. And you can push the edges of that. We have some dark that we're going to be setting in there for him. And um, then uh, we'll bring the light in. We've got to start thinking about our light. Let's bring the light in from the upper left. So... We'll put make his back, his mantle here, his back feathers back here, a little bit lighter. We'll use some of that light, maybe out on here on some of his primaries. Just pull some in. We're just very quickly blocking in here. That's what we're doing. We'll pull in here onto his, his feathers here, a couple of um, tail feathers here, pulling in like that. And... Um, he has yellow and white down on his, uh, back here on the base of his tail. So we'll lighten up a little bit more. And we'll start those in. And we'll start some of this, a little bit grayer, but start some of this right in underneath his uh, breast feathers here. We'll walk that up into the yellow. And move your brush in all different kinds of ways. So we're just... Basing him in, basically, getting a, what we call poster painting, what is called in, in in some techniques, poster painting, block painting in before we move. But I don't like to leave harsh edges. I'd rather leave no color than a harsh edge on something. So, all right, so we'll pull down. This will eventually be a important area as we, uh, because we've got to get the colors correct to turn his head there. So we'll pull that down like that, okay, and uh, then uh, we'll look to that darker color there. We'll look to that darker color, um, and we, since I don't have black or anything, I've got to make one. So one of your greatest colors is your is your red, violet, and pine green. That's a, a really a, a great color and uh, to uh, to work with here, to darken down here. But I'll put a little burnt sienna in that as well. So red violet and uh, pine green, those great dark colors, real dark colors. Let's make that here. Here we go. And a little bit of blue and, and some burnt sienna and stuff that keeps that nice dark. This will be a little band of the dark that's going to pull right up here on him. And you'll see that. He's got this little band that comes up there. So we'll pull that in. And I'll just use my finger here to drop some of that in. And uh, that's a that's about as much as I want to do with that number six. I might go to uh, like my uh, uh, four, which I set out here. Here we go. My four. My four is a little easier. Four is a little easier. But I do like to start out with a little bit small and... Um, I mean, excuse me, a little bit large and put areas in here. So we'll push that area in there, that band. It's going to go right up by where his beak's going to come in there. We need to leave a little bit of light for the eye ring. Now, some of this dark is going to go, as you can see, it flicks through his most of his feathers along his back and stuff like that here, almost in stripes. So we'll just band a, a few areas here with some of that into his back, which is kind of cool, and a little bit back there. We can use some of this, maybe a bit more burnt sienna. I don't like to work too long with the same color, so I'll change it up, maybe some burnt sienna 
that we can use here to help differentiate some of the primaries and the, the, the feathers themselves, the feather separations, and some of that color into that. That works out pretty nice. That's a pretty color. Let's put some maybe down into the feather separations here onto his tail and pull back just a bit here. Some of this uh, coloring can come down into the grays up here. Just, and I see I use my paint fairly dry, so I get a lot of granulation into it, but um, I'll use water to reconstitute it on the palette as it starts to dry up here. And um, we'll pull a little bit of that flicking through uh, some of his, it goes through his body here. You'll see that flicking of color through his body there as well. So we'll just use this to kind of, and you just rotate and change your brush, different angles, chisels, stuff like that. So you don't make the same stroke twice. That'll just kill his look. So you get a, a variation of the looks just by rotating and turning chisel corners, you know, edges of the brush, you know, so that uh, you'll get the same. Now I'm going to go back to a little more blue into this. And uh, let's come up onto his mantle and push a little bit in there. Okay. And, uh, of course, we're going to have some other light colors and stuff in his feathers. Now, before I get too far into that, let's set that brush into the water here. And these fusion brushes, you know, they're glued in and they have, they're they not wood handles when we do this. So you can just set them back into the water and leave them there in the water. They're fine. There's nothing's going to happen to it. You know, the old wood brushes and stuff, We especially if they had a, a poor paint on it, would crack and stuff, and I didn't like that. But uh, now you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to make that dark. I'm going to use my number four round. And let's come in and just work. And I like to work the eye by just taps. I'll make the oval kind of a fat oval shape here of the eye. I'll leave a little bit of the background so I can put the eye ring around there. Now, sometimes I start out real dark, and sometimes I start out with burnt sienna. But in either case, well, it doesn't make a difference which way you start out. I'm going to put a little burnt sienna to the back side. That puts, and I know that's probably hard to see, but that puts a little warmth right there into the eye. So let's take some light color. Let's come down in here, push that. i got a little yellow in there. Let's model that with a little bit of gray here. So model, when I say model, it means I tap it into that, but I don't mix it up into a solid color. So you can see it modeled through there. And what that does is it comes off your brush differently here. Some, you know, it's hard to see in a small area like this, but we do it anyway. But I'll, I'll put the light band in on his eye right there. Okay. And um, we'll use some of this right underneath. Now, Generally, what I do in a lot of my paintings is I overpaint the white and I paint it out with the dark. That's one of the techniques I like. So I generally put on too much white. That's the way I like to paint. And um, and I control the white with the dark since the darks take out the light a lot easier. Um, let's take a kind of a gray right into that, model that in. I mixed it too much there. Just model that in a bit. And let's start a little bit of the crossing of some of these tones here back. So I'll start to really break up the edges of the colors crossing over each other. And this is what makes a pretty bird is when you go back and forth and back and forth. Let's pick up a little more light. Let's bring in a lighter stroke, smaller stroke, right in there into the front. And right up by that. Now we'll leave some shadow over there on that other side. That will help him round help his eye round over. Let's take some of that light, that pure white, and work that right around, maybe a touch or two around the eye. Usually when I work the eye like this, I, you know, I'll, I'll do it a couple of times. You know, this, um, I, you know, back and forth with the eye and the eye ring and stuff to get the looks that I want. So I never try to get it the first time. And that back and forth just adds so much interest to it. Now, <clears throat> you know, the um, the wobbler itself here, uh, let's take a, depends on the way his beak hits the light. Sometimes you see it's slightly lighter underneath. Sometimes it's a, a, you know, a real dark beak, but actually it's just a touch lighter 
underneath. So I'll start out with the dark. I'm going to come in. This is where we want the center line of his face. So his beak comes in right to here. And I'll pull that right out to here, a darker color. And for interest on it, I will put a, instead of having just one big dark beak, I'm going to uh, lighten it up. I like, I like that. Sometimes I'll, even if you don't see it in a reference photo or something, like you don't see it here because of the way his face is turned, but I'll go ahead and add that in anyway, just because it's a, it's, to me, it's a little prettier with, if it has, um, slightly different color onto the underside of the beak. So we'll push that in there like that and make sure you draw that into his face the way he's, because that's, you know, it needs that. And that's easy to do with the light. You can draw that in just a little bit there. Now, maybe a touch of a lighter gray or so as a shine up here on the top beak. And again, what I do is I put on too much and then what I do is, is come back in with the dark and then paint out what I don't need or what I don't like. So I'll leave a little shine right up there like that. Um, let's take just a touch of this light. And we'll push this right around to the back side of that beak. I need to build a little bit better of a, a line of that coming into the face. And since it's quite dark, his beak and stuff is quite dark, all, um, he does have the small feathers up and around his face up here. And we'll just make those with the tip of the brush, tapping this around and around like that. And you can hear the dog whining back here. That's whenever she scratches herself. This is my son's dog, his lab. Um, whenever she scratches herself, she always whines as she's she's scratching and scratching herself. I always think that's funny. So that's my son's uh, lab. And we have, uh, Martha and I have her sister. And her sister doesn't do it. They're, they're so totally separate from each other. But let's take a little dark and let's tap in. So what I'll do is I'll go back and forth between some of these a, a couple of times. And, uh, you know, we set that light and stuff onto the uh, beak so a couple of times. I never, you know, whenever I'm painting and stuff like this, especially if I'm doing commission work, I want this to be a, a little bit better. I, um, I generally take my time several times back and forth and back and forth and stuff into it. So that uh, works really well. I'll take a little blue, a little green, and... Um, a little bit of red to, glue, to uh, tone it down, slightly different color. Paint out, paint into some of that uh, dark color there. Leave a bit of the light right around the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, you know the band there, the light band of that. We still got to do all the feathering and stuff on on this bird, so long ways to go. Matter of fact, let's put some medium gray feathers in. We'll grab some of that. And uh, we'll put some medium gray feathers. Now, sometimes I'll poke in a little bit of extender um, just to keep my pile wet here so I can change the color, change the color. I don't use it for blending because I'm not a blender. I use it just so I, uh, so I keep the color wet for just a bit onto the palette here. And so I'll use that gray. And let's get back in here with some other gray here and work a different, slightly different gray. So I use the tip and pull down. That's how I like the feather. So I'll pull some of this up into that, uh, up into that darker band up there. We might have a, a bit of it, a little bit darker here. A bit of it coming up into here for some modeling here. Modeling that dark in there, that makes it kind of nice here. Uh, we're going to be putting some heavier textures as well because I like those. I think that just adds so much. But I like the point of this. If I'm going to feather feather, I like the point of this uh, this brush, you know, the number four. I like it whenever I do what I call painterly birds. Um, painterly, like in some of the books I do, they're, they're painterly. In other words, they don't have a lot of real light detailing, you know, feathers. They're, they're put on with the movement more than anything else. That's why I use my two or my four flat. And I just absolutely um, love those 
you know, painting those types of feathers. And I'll, I'll show you. I put the, I paint those several different ways. But let's take a little bit of light. Let's take my number four. And um, we'll push in some light to the ends of these coverts here. Of these feathers right here like this and maybe uh, draw some of this up here so I uh, and I'll let some of this in other words instead of doing perfect edges I won't do perfect edges here at all let's take some of this um, and the wing feathers are normally slow, a little bit warmer slightly different color let's just slide some of that through here get some of that a softer color into that but um let's tap tap in take a little bit of light and i'm just going to work that in here pulling out like this these are more feathering strokes that i do where i paint for the color and the movement more than having a, like an individual feather it's more painterly what i call painterly here so <clears throat> let's take some dark here some green and some red here, a little burnt sienna here, some of our kind of a darker color. And this is what I do when I do negative painting out on the feathers. I'll start out here like this and I'll pull in right up next to the edge, leaving a little bit of the light. And I won't always reload my brush. And so I kind of always start in the area that I want the most detail, which is going to be in this center area. And I'll paint back like this, leaving the little light tips to the feathers. And I can blur those off on the other the other side over there. Because as they come back up here, there's a second set of kind of gray light ones here. Slightly different right up here. I'll just tap some of that in. And I'll work the color a couple ways. Sometimes I'll pull in up this way as well, giving some of the light coming up. In between that but I like those those light and I'll use my finger like that so I give the impression the impression of the you know individual feathers here without getting all of the detailed edges that the little round would give you it's a little different look let's put some light up through here right there separate that wing just a bit and you have to decide you know um, how much detail you're going to do on your little bird you know this is going to be about the bird yes but there's a lot of flowers coming here so we have to decide how much is this is going to be about the bird but so i'll take some of that color i'll travel it through a bit some of my other areas there that's got a, a pretty good look on him right now but what i mean by you know really feathering him up instead of I'll take, a, and one of the things I like is I'll take a big dollop of the heavier, thicker white here. I like my white to be really thick. And I'll pull down like that and leave a textured edge of that, just like that. And that's where I really, really like to get into the, the heaviness of it. Now that four is a little difficult to do that with, so I might go to my two. You know, many lessons that you watch me do... I uh, use one brush all the time through the whole painting of it. Maybe a three-quarter inch for the background and then an eight or a ten to paint flowers and stuff. So this is one of the few times that you see me go through a lot of brushes. And it all depends on, um, you know, how much detailing that I want to do, you know, on on my subject here. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a really big casual all a Prima painter more than anything else. I like to paint it with as few of brushes as possible. But sometimes I go back and forth so I get different interests, especially if I have a commission piece like this where someone is expecting a really nice work, then I'm going to put just a little bit more into it. I myself, I like the quick ones. You know, you have different kinds, you know, some that, uh, you know, you have different studies, what I call 30-minute paintings. I love those. Those are some of my favorite ones rather than ones that I take too much time or take a lot of time refining. I love the quick, casual power of the brush. That's what I really like, that power of the brush. But uh, sometimes painting these, are they're all fun. So if you want to paint it a little faster, so you can. Let's put a little heavier stroke. This is my number two flat, and see how much more power it gives 
and I can push that right in there in the round part of his face and um, we'll use the little corner of it here to even though I might put a little bit more on the eye we'll put the little catch light on his eye there with that let's put this lighter gray down just a bit more right there going through that's kind of nice maybe a a little bit brighter or yellow orange or something here a little yellow oxide a little darty light yellow a little light here right into that beak that's kind of nice gives it an extra little light there and uh, that but that smaller too i don't want to do too long because it is a lot of detail now as i come back to the uh, body feathers here I'll gray these colors up, maybe put a little more extender into that so they stay wet here. And uh, let's pull through here some larger. And like I say, I go back and forth between my lights and my darks. We want to we wanna whisper out the edges here on this back of his rump here. Here like that. Let's grab some of that heavier light here see i love that and push like that see that's the painterly look rather than doing the individual feathers and i just really enjoy the painterly look so i'll overpaint the white i generally overpaint the white and i'll come back and push in some darks see how the darks just add that extra little bit there into that we can go a little bit darker there on some of that catch that see I use in the corner sometimes the flat sometimes the you know, the edges of it chisel edges of it create all this different little interest and stuff you know he has his second set of little light coverts right up here let's put those in with this larger brush as well and uh, So we'll, we'll go a little bit longer than, you know, my all my Christmas paintings, my 30 minutes, so, because we're going to be painting a little more detail in that, but this is kind of a fun one to have. Those of you that want to paint this little yellow rump wobbler up as a little gift and stuff, it's kind of fun. It's, I love this time of year, we always love this time of year at the studio, and we love to do things and, uh, and, uh, do all different kinds of paintings and stuff here. All right, let's get that um, Hansa. Maybe a little yellow oxide into that. Now, Hansa is a semi-transparent. If I want to give it any kind of opacity, I'll put just a touch of white into that. And uh, let's pull through here. Right up into the lights, right up there, pull down this way. Now I got rid of a little bit too much of my uh, yellow oxide. I want to leave just a touch of that showing like up underneath the wing here into the shadows and stuff so you get this feeling of light and shadow. So I'll just pick up a little bit more, push that in. And likewise, it's very easy to control that yellow with the yellow oxide. The yellow oxide will take it out. It's opaque. Let's put a touch of that light back here. So he gets his carry name, the Yellow Rump Wobbler. Let's put a little bit of yellow right up here. Just break the edge a bit so it get, looks a little feathery there. That's kind of cute. <clears throat> and um, um, he will have, if you see that, he gets a little bit of that flicking right up, up underneath there. So let's... Uh, just add a bit of that. That's a little cool. I'm going to add a little burnt sienna to it. That's better. Let's put just a bit of that flicking in there. Right up there like that. And um, we'll go back and forth here. I'm going to go back down to my two and set some light. Some light, light. Light feathers right up over that. Break that up just a bit. There. That's kind of nice. 
I really like to use really thick, thick white. This is, you know, my white that I use in those containers and stuff. You know, I, I let it sit out for a little bit more than the other colors for a couple hours so it gets really thick. And uh, I like to use white thick in, in textures and highlights and stuff because I can always thin it out. You can always add water to it and thin it out. You can add extender if you want, thin it out. But I really like it thick, thick. So I let it, I put it out on the palette a little bit longer than some of my other colors and let it start drying up a bit. Let's um, pop up the gray on his wings in a few areas, just a little bit more here, and just a few of them here. And again, I can negative paint back. Don't use the same color. Here I have a little more burnt sienna. So if I don't use the same color, I'll get a different look to it. And that's what I like. Now, a lot of this back area, I'm just going to, you know, let kind of kind of go away. But I will want to have um, probably a little bit more feathering right up in here. Because this is still kind of close in the design. So I'll just use some small light strokes there. Let's put a few of those light strokes out here by the edges and if I need to let's put just a little bit more of the flicking in there right in there like that that's kind of that's kind of nice okay so we've got a good look to him um, right now I want to take uh, just a touch more of my uh, the line that I really want to be clear that is the most interest is your highest contrast between two colors here is going to be your white against your dark. So the lower part of the eye ring right here up against the clear round part of that dark of his eye. So I really want that really, see how even that starts to clean up that line. So, you know, one of the things that you get in details of your painting is you know, just, I mean, that stands out is the absolute, the detail of the line. It's one of the most important things. So I will make sure that that line is crystal clear right there, just like that. And you can see that that really, really crisps up that eye. Now you can do the same thing like on the point of his beak or something like that. But I like to leave, you know, I like to leave it. Now, you know, do you clean up back through here or not? You know, that's, that's kind of your choice, you know. Um, I maybe bring a little more detail, maybe with our little number two, reset a couple of the front light wing feathers here. That that will really bring them forward. See that little bit of texture right there like that? How that brings that forward. Um, you know, how much you do is kind of up to you. I wouldn't get too wild and crazy. Maybe a little bit of the Hansa with some of that white right here to really uh, pop up just a few strokes of that don't go everywhere with it you'll flatten them out but uh, pops up a little bit of that light you see go through his body there maybe just a little mark of that right up here and a little tap the little taps little edges that gives like little shines little little sparks of interest is what i call it little sparks of interest that just make him kind of fun and um yeah but i want to leave i want to leave the majority back here just you see him and he's a little bit painterly and i want to make sure the color back here on the tail is a little bit darker so i add some yellow oxide to that yellow we'll push some of that in right like that um yeah but it just uh, a little bit more painterly there is great maybe uh Let's take some more burnt sienna and our blue here, our darker kind of color. I'll add just a touch of extender just to keep this wet for a minute. I'm not to blend because everything here is dry. So I'm not going to be blending. I'm just going to be keeping it wet. And I'll just pull up with that too. See that? You can get like little feather looks with that too as well right in there. Maybe a touch more burnt sienna. This is up in your front. So you want to use some different colors right in through here. So you get some 
beautiful coloring. And then we just let everything soften out and fade back as it goes back. So, um, you know, it's just, uh, and back and forth a couple times. So pull the light back through there. And with the two override, you might get another color showing up in there, and that's great. Let's get a little more yellow oxide band right up underneath here. Increase that just a bit. That also helps separate the wing. One of the things that those of you who have painted a lot of birds with me know that one of my signatures and things that I like to do is I always like to pull a couple of light feathers up over the wing and into the body here that make a couple of little sparks of light here like this. Right across like this. And uh, it's kind of like one of my little signatures of that. I always tell one of my little birds, I love to do that. I don't always do it, but boy, the majority of the time I do it, I love it. Let's just add a bit of yellow right in there. I think that that's pretty good. He's a, a pretty nice little bird. It, let's soften the um, back rump here. Take a little bit of this gray. Soften some of these marks right in here, override that yellow a bit, and maybe uh, bring the line of the tail up just a touch, just a streak like that is all it needs because you're way out of your center of interest. You don't need a lot of stuff going on there. And if you start detailing and worrying about that too much, then you know it, it, it will detract, detract from him, it really will. So, so he's got a pretty nice little face. I could, you know push just a touch more into his beak and then we'll go down and uh, work on our our flowers and stuff. Let's put a little more light right in here that will really show the turning of his beak there because uh, you'll see it more into his body. Maybe just a little line. This is where I like to use the chisel of the of the uh, small flats as opposed to a perfect point of a round because the chisel is not as perfect and I don't you know I I, I used to for many years I, I painted realism and I don't like to do that anymore I like it to be a painting which means blurring the edges and edges that aren't quite perfect and stuff that's that's what I like maybe uh, touch more of my yellow gray here right back on that band and um, if we want this if we really want to help turn his face one last little thing here show you is we've got to make a color break in other words different colors um, and we do that because the light you know it's kind of like when you shadow a, a box or cube okay each plane because light doesn't go around in circles, each plane will be a slightly different color. So the, the light struck plane, the receding plane, and the shadow plane. So what I'm going to do here is create a gray, just a slightly lighter gray. I if I might come right into here, right into this area, right in here, maybe a little bit lighter. So like his head is turned here, so his feathers so that you would have like one plane and two planes right here. So we'll just a touch too light. I want it just a little bit, that's perfect. Different here. And see how that starts to turn his head just a bit. Now we need to reset our darks and stuff here up closer to his eye. So we'll pull some darks down just a bit here. Down like that. And like that, but leaving that little bit of light here of this plane right here starts to turn his face just a touch, and that's what we need. So we break it, and you try to do it at like two different angles. So like this one's coming down, and you can see the more of an angle I pull this down here, and this one pulls up like that, that starts to turn his head. So... Whenever you're turning the, the, the features of a bird or something, you know, you look at different angles. So here I'll pull up slightly. There like that. So see you going down and then going up, and that's starting to uh, turn his head. And let's um, pull some of this light 
let it fade off right there at that angle. There. There we go. Now that is, I, I like that, but it's just like a little bit too blended for me. So I'm just going to pull through just a bit. I don't like it blended. I like streaks. I like modeling. I like color. I like life to the stroke. There. A little bit better. Well, let's go down and um, paint that. So that gives a, a pretty good look uh, to him. We can do some stuff to help him pop off or something like that in uh, if if we want to um but uh actually we should put one last little stroke I keep saying that then one of the things let's grab actually let's grab my two here or so there's four six there it is right there let's just grab that and put one more to break away from the background here let's get that light stroke this helps his face break away from that background there just a bit now we leave that just a bit of gray there just like that and that helps break his face and that's pretty good that that white also helps lift the beak right off of his uh, body here so if your beak is a little bit lost in there put some light around it like this just tap around and uh, that will pop that beak right off of the edge there like that okay so <clears throat> let's get into the the feeling of the the rose mauling kind of colors here of this and um going back to the larger brush and larger brush painting of it here i'm going to turn the board here and just kind of set the uh set some colors so let's look at doing some yellows you know we can do yellows into pinks and stuff like that so let's just we're going to start speeding it up painting faster because we want to paint very casual here this is what my my collector likes, casual. And I'm going to blur off the edges and stuff. So we'll pull some of this color down like this. Now, a beautiful color to use in conjunction with this is, is your burnt sienna and um, some of your uh, uh, quinacridone to cool it off a bit. Let's pull that through like that. Let's turn this one down. Slightly different than what my original sketch was, but this is what I do. I get into the painting of it, and I start looking at them differently. The sketch is an idea. Don't ever let it control you as the artist, because you'll lose that. So many people ask me, you know, how do you get this casual and stuff? The worst thing you can do is put on a really defined line. Because then that stops your creativity. Your eye can't see past the line and you start feel, filling it in and it just becomes stiff. So, you know, I never tell, I always tell my students, don't be doing that. Don't be, you know, don't be pushing that stuff in. We're just going to push some color around here like this. And uh, maybe out, right out through here, we'll push some of these colors. We're not going to make individual flowers. We'll keep it more like a, feel of a rose mauling, the, the, the loose casual part of that. This would be great. So we'll push some of those colors around. We'll push some of this right around in there like that. Nice little edges. Um, lights, little grays. Just look to, to lift the bird off just a bit. Let's get into the painting of the uh, the rose here. Some cool color. Let's splash around some cool color here, and a little bit cooler, some quinacridone pinks kind of colors through here, and uh, just a bit of that. I don't want to get too wild with that because it is, but it, you know, you're heading when you're heading that way, you're starting to head to compliments to some of the other colors that we were working with. So let's take a little Darulite splash. I love that warmth that splashes into the light top part of the flower here. And, um, you know, it's just, it's such a lovely yellow. And we'll get a little Hansa into this. We'll get our lighter yellows. And let's create some of the little petals here, pulling in to like the bowl. So, now, this is what I like is when you get, see, we've got a little stroke of that pinky color coming out there because I don't clean my brush. 
here was I start when I start to paint casual flowers I don't clean my brush and so you see you'll pick up all the other colors that you now worked through so and it's it's a great way to paint them let's put a light here and just pull this through let that stay very very light and casual here okay and a little bit cooler color here just curving I'm just curving my brush and you notice that you know this is hard for me to uh, to teach because I can't slow down I slow down I'll get stiff so you just got to watch it a hundred times I'm sorry I, I I can't slow down you know but I'm thinking here lighter and smaller as I come to the front of the flower so I'm building lighter color this is my main flower so I'll build some lighter color right up in here to the front. And I'm just going to go ahead and pretty much almost finish this one off, except for a few things. Maybe a little bit of that pink into the bottom set of the flower there like that. And see, that's kind of pretty. That's you know, it's very loose, a lot of energy to it, which I like. Let's take a little bit of that Darryl light and white and set a few little light airy strokes right back in here that's kind of nice maybe uh one or two just see those are just there to carry color more than anything else this one that's out here now let's get down to the darker yellow oxide and quinacridone let's try to stay out of some of the other suit let's not go quite that light so, you know don't go too light keep this one down just a bit push it around Keep your, so your strokes are softer. Everything is softer. More yellow oxides. Maybe a little cooler quinacridone into that. Because that quinacridone is quite pretty. Maybe an edge of a petal here. But you can see it's not as edgy and not as light. I could have a touch of light into that. Just a touch to help bring it forward above this one. Here. And then... I'll let this uh, fade away. Let's get just a touch of light. Thinking a stroke, boom, right there like that. Nothing more than that. Then put the cool down here and find the bottom of the bowl. Push your finger to find the bottom of the bowl like I showed you in so many rows, you know, rose classes and stuff, okay? Find that bottom of the bowl. So you see that one kicking off like that. I could use a little bit of that pink right up here like that that's kind of pretty um, a little water it starts to dry up here a little water carrying that there that's kind of pretty let's um, go right over here this one now you know a lot of times when I paint flowers I don't turn the piece but I was a rose mauler and still am rose mauler for the last 35 years and we uh, my teacher my mentor and teacher always told me to turn and of course we concentrated on stroke controls and stuff we paint it so much different than i do now but i still take all of those lessons with you that's all part of you as an artist a little darulide and the yellow oxide and white staying out of the hansi yellow so it's not quite as bright here so i use that that's one reason why if i'm going to do a lot of yellows i put those three yellows out so i can still get interest without getting that and but preserving that that haunts it right up for the front interest part of the road you know interest part of the painting let's take just a bit of that burnt sienna and quinacridone again here maybe a little more burnt sienna than quinacridone and reset that this side here that's nice you can use that to reset any kind of shadow in there push that around a bit just real quick quick kind of uh roses here there you know it's kind of like when i do uh when i do like a bird here with these daisies i like i like them to be all be a little different and i like to paint them very fast or even when i do the roses here with like these see like each one of these is completely different and uh, so i avoid trying to have any kind of a a pattern at all to it you know and uh, yeah it's pretty so we've got some powerful yellow there I want to have just a bit of that yellow power showing up back up over onto this side. And all I need is the color. 
I don't need anything other than the color. We can even, you know, turn that into kind of a shape or something like that or a scroll or something here. But I just need the color movement more than anything else. Um, I kind of like that. Now, um, let's talk, let's think about leaves. Pine green, burnt sienna, some of my yellows right down here. Those all make this, this pretty leaves. I'm going to uh, add some water here. I'm going to do real casual, uh, simplistic leaves. Pull in a couple of strokes, two to three strokes. Let that set for a second. This is a set of leaves I, I use in a lot of Paint It Simply. And then I just pull off. Wipe your hand, wipe your finger off because you pick up paint. Pull off some of that so I get some streaks and some interest in it. And uh, I like that. Let it set for a second or else you'll pull off all the paint. Let it set and let's pull some right in here. And I like the streaks. I like the kind of the dry brush granulation. You can get to that. You know, we get some of that. And all I'm looking at is just rounding down right like this to finish off that design. Curve it off so this line, this rose doesn't pull. You see that center pulls your eye off there like that. So um, I'm looking at pulling your, your sh the, the shape out and around. So... Uh, Let's just put a little bit of that right back up here. Some of that right out here. And you can pull down. You don't have to always, you know, make a leaf. You can pull down, pull out like this. You know, this is some of the stuff I like to do. Take your paper towel and pull down like this. Maybe just a bit of water into that. And create that uh, pulling down, that different kind of look right like that there. That's the contemporary kind of look. And uh, pull some of that down. That looks pretty good there. Like that. A little different. You know, very, very different colors and stuff here. You know, just, uh, I like that. Let's uh, go to a smaller number six flat here. And we'll use our pine green and... Uh, Maybe a little more burnt sienna here. And um, we'll add some uh, stroke movements back through some of this here just to uh, break it up. And uh, so we'll, we'll look at here down. I'm going to add some lines and stuff like that. But see, all of this starts to add the lightness and airiness to uh, to the design that I like here, the little extra movements and stuff. And um, it gets the whimsical feeling of the, um, the whimsical nature of the uh, rose mulling of, of like Telemark and stuff. So it's kind of like, you know, when I paint these, it's like I'm thinking of, you know, all my years of being a, a Telemark and a, and a Rogelin painter and stuff, mostly Telemark. And, um, then how I do it today, you know, capturing the, the edges and stuff, t uh, the, the feeling of the movements and stuff today here. So got some of that. Different. It's all different. And uh, I'm going to, uh, so that's kind of, you know, catches those colors and stuff kind of pretty there. Now, um, to do some of the, the, I'm going to do a little bit of burnt sienna. I like burnt sienna in this green, pine green. Add some water. I'm going to do some very thin liner work decoration out here, um, and because it's it's another way to add because you've got big flowers and I got a lot of weight in that, and I can use these to uh, um, I can use these lines to really start to lighten and airy up the design. So I'm going to use my little number four round here, and I like that because I can press hard and create uh, um, more of a you know, a wider line, or I can use it to uh, create thinner lines here. And so what I'm going to do is just follow. Now I can, you know, put on some, some ideas for the leaves and stuff here. But mostly what I do is, is step off the edge of the color and create a shape with the lines. And it puts a visual edge or 
or and a movement more than anything else of what I like to create is a movement to that so there's a real art to uh, to doing the lines to doing this kind of stuff and uh, um, you know just you, you you just have to you know to you just have to paint it a lot to get a whole bank of ideas about lines and what these lines can look like and stuff to uh, to decorate and the feel of it there's you know and every artist is a little different it's why I always loved it and when I first started it was like almost impossible for me to do something like this and now I do stuff like this without even thinking you know after all these years and I just make shapes I just line up and make shapes and uh, you know full out and so I like to use a, a brush that has body to hold a lot of paint but I also like to uh, I mean, it has to have a very fine point so I can do a very fine line here for some of the line decorations and stuff and just kind of and you can see what those lines do see how they start to they lighten up and add a lot of energy and life to the to the painting here and really in like an area like this so I can create like a secondary acanthus leaf here the shape of the acanthus leaf without painting one and that's the the beautiful part about it so you don't have to have the heavy color of painting it you can give the feel of the acanthus leaf being there here out like that so it's kind of a a fun little thing now those of you that are on uh you know that are into the class oh let's use this also here for his uh legs coming down he should should be standing here we'll push a little bit of that here <clears throat> excuse me we'll make him into that but uh now i have some other ones uh, of this type of style that uh, different kind of a little wren the little wren that I like one of my favorite little bird subjects is a little wren so um, but I have a little wren done with this type of, of style and uh, casual bit of painting he's a lot of fun to paint a lot of fun but uh, working the you know the lines let's uh, so you would imagine this coming out and around. We'll do a real thin, broken line here. Just out into the background here. Some kind of idea of a little scroll and stuff is just, you know, you might want to have a little line. See, the little lines are like extra little scrolls that just kind of fill up and and add movement and add the spinning life and energy to the to the design they add that movement to it really kind of fun here and a few little lines here and you know that always this is kind of the decision do you do the flowers you know um and sometimes i do the flowers and sometimes I don't, and I don't think I'll do the flowers this time. Maybe a, a few on the uh, outside edges or something like that, but it really doesn't need it in there. The bird doesn't need any in there. Just lines are just helping the um, the overall movement. Now, with some of that uh, nice burnt sienna color, that's you know burnt sienna and green, but heavier on the burnt sienna, um, it's kind of nice to have a few... Uh, almost like little accent strokes what we call little movements of that color out by itself so you see it in a in a few places here um that and and so the the color is definitely something that you see and so you're seeing it in the lines and you're seeing it through the decoration so i'll just look through a couple of places and see do is there a place that i might need you know just some of that movement I think that's all pretty good here and I don't um, 
I just kind of follow my feeling on it. So what I really like here is this one's darker than this one that pushes that one further out. Um, you know, I've got a nice light source into that one right there. So not everything is exactly the same um, through there. I, I've got just a little bit of a flat edge to the scroll here, which is easy to take care of with just a nice curved line even of this a little heavier just right on the chisel just draw that right up and through and out and uh, break that line just a bit and so the bird sits up there now I could lighten up the the uh, the legs on the bird just a touch but a little yellow a little a little burnt sienna a little light color here just, and I, again, I like it to be, I don't like it to be structured. I like to, uh, I like it to be very casual. That's the way I roll now, you know, with these kinds of things. I like them like that, and that's what my customer likes on these as well. So, all right, there's number 430 for the year. Okay, I'm going to try, this is the early part of November. I'm going to try to break 500 again this year. That's my goal, so couple more every day and I'll get it okay but uh, that doesn't take too long what about an hour a little over a little over an hour to uh, paint something like that and you can have a fun little board and uh, those nice bright yellow roses and stuff on there okay hope you enjoyed it had a great time look over to uh, the Jansen Art Online we have a whole bunch of these little things coming up and with your membership into any class or art videos direct or anything you're going to get all of these paintings for free. So it's uh, um, it's it's kind of nice. You'll look for them on the continuing education page, okay? We'll have a lot more. Of course, you are if you watch, you're watching this kind of stuff, okay? If you want to paint some more, and we'll paint them. And let's let's make this, this holiday season and Christmas, let's make it all about painting. That's what I like. I like to give painted gifts. You know what? That's one of the things I was saying in one of the videos that, you know, a lot of uh, today, a lot of I always think, oh, you go out there and buy something, you go buy electronics or something like that. But the electronics, they're only good for a few years and they're gone. They're outdated and they're gone. But a painting, they'll keep their entire life. Some of them that I've given to friends and family and stuff, I go over to their house and they're still there, you know, which, you know, 20 years later, it's still there. There's a couple of them I'd like to replace, but they're still there. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. Hope to see you on some of the other classes. Okay, see you later.